Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning to you and to your viewers. Thank you so much once again, Minister, for making time for us. Let's start off here. A statement that's come out of DERCO, the head of public diplomacy, saying that uh, DERCO will today demarge the U.S. ambassador to South Africa. Um, would you be able to tell us, if at all, Minister, what exactly it is uh, that the South African government is trying to ascertain from the ambassador? And uh, no, that, that we must leave to DECO. What has happened is that the ambassador has not followed diplomatic channels in terms of dealing with issues in South Africa, and it's not the first time that has happened. The, uh, the ambassador tends to use what we call megaphone diplomacy, and it doesn't work. If the U.S. has concerns about anything in South Africa, they are allowed to raise their concerns, but their channels. The channels, they need to contact the uh, DECO and say these are the issues that we have because we have a relationship with the United States of America. And if there are security concerns, they can uh, uh, interact through the liaisons, the respective security liaisons, whether it's defense or intelligence, and they we can then sort the issues. So they have not done that. And what was worrying is that, if you recall, they once issued, the embassy once issued a, a, a terror alert when in, in not only the rich square mile in the African continent, but at a period that there was a gay pride march scheduled for that time. And if you know that in our continent we are faced with challenges of homophobia, when you issue a terror alert based on not ascertained information, you are saying the LGBTQI community are up for being targeted. Anybody can do anything. And in this country, we've said we protect all South Africans and we protect everybody. And they did that without even con uh, contacting us and ascertaining whether their information they've gathered, because they don't gather at the extent at which we gather in the country. Whether that which they've gathered they, is, is the same compared notes with us. We have a cooperation agreement on security matters to say, what, what do you see? What are you having? And this is what we have. And we didn't compare notes. They didn't compare notes. And they want to treat us as if we're one of their uh, uh, states there. We're not one of their states. We are in sovereign state, we are a republic, we are not going to co-govern with the ambassador of the U.S. And for the, the DECO to demarch is part of the part of the diplomatic channels that we use when uh, to express our own, uh, our unhappiness. Yeah. And uh, specific to that, okay, go ahead. Okay, no, this, and I wanted to, to just jump in there, Minister, thank you for, for that opportunity, because you're talking about the ambassador not having followed the correct channels, and the allegations here is that the South African government ignored intelligence from the U.S. about uh, this uh, ship, Lady R, right? So what communication was there uh, with the South African government by intelligence officials? Uh, look, uh, uh, we can't speak about intelligence things. There was no such a, a ignoring of information from the U.S. government. That that is nonsensical at 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 at, uh, at, at best. And where I am, I'm saying the, the president have come out and said we are instituting an inquiry. And why we institute an inquiry? Because when you come through, you said we have this consent, and we say to you, official from the National Conventions, uh, Arms Conventions Control Committee. We do not have record of any authorization that has taken place of South Africa selling arms to the, uh, to the Ukraine, to, the, uh, to Russia, to Belarus. And I'm, I'm raising Belarus because there was a, a specific parliamentary question raised uh, uh, last year to say, did you sell any arms to Belarus? And I'm including that in that collective of, so that we don't go back and forth in, in time. We said officially we do not have that authorization. There was no authorization granted because we comply as a country to our na own National uh, Conventional Arms Control Act, which says our arms cannot be, arms manufactured in South Africa cannot be used in wars that will affect women, children, and innocent people. That we are very clear. And there is a control mechanism, there is an oversight of that uh, work that is done by that committee. And we said there is no such authorization. It's public knowledge, but the U.S. are already aware. And if they come and say, look, we have got intelligence that there was a violation of your own legal processes. There was a violation of your approval. Give us the time and space. We have engaged with them. Remember, we have had uh, interactions with them. We've said to them, we will institute a, a, an inquiry on the matter. And we, uh, with that inquiry, we'll then clarify a number of things to say, was there a violation? And what was the purpose of that of that uh, of the ship docking? Because what we need to clarify is that South Africa has no sanctions against Russia, and the United Nations, which is a multilateral body whose decisions then become binding to us, has no sanctions against Russia. 
it is the USA who have sanctioned Russia. So when they sanction Russia, they must not drag us into their issues with, uh, with Russia. We have said we don't want to be dragged into the issues, uh, into their differences with Russia. We don't want to be dragged into their differences with China. We have our own independent and sovereign relationship with the USA. We have a sovereign, independent relationship with Russia, with China, with any other country. And where they have differences with those countries and we don't have differences, we can say where are your differences, but we are not affected there, so we're not going to enter. And we've clarified that on the issue of Ukraine and Russia, we remain non-aligned and our, and the U.S. came to us and said, oh, South Africa, because you have a relationship with Russia, we said, our historic relationship is not with Russia, it's with the USSR, which includes the very Ukraine. Oh. And therefore, we would want to play a mediating role so that they could, could find a peaceful re resolution to the conflict, to the war, so that there can be peace in, 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 in that area. Minister, um, what's clear from that statement as well is that a meeting or engagements have happened. This is now speaking about the statement that came out of uh, the presidency. Earlier engagements did take place. Since those engagements uh, took place, what did the South African government do after that? Yes, the government says that a retired judge will be hired to look into these allegations. But since the engagement with the U.S. government, what took place from the South African side to look into these allegations? And from our intelligence point of view, outside of what the NCAC has said, from intelligence, though, do we know if any private uh, company would have supplied arms to the Russian Federation? <laughs> Thank you for the question. In terms of when we had the engagements with the U.S. and in terms of and the actions that are required to be taken, we had also started our own process. That's why, if you recall, the Minister of Defense came out and clarified. She said, look, we received a consignment and I won't want to go into that uh, statement because it's going to be part of the inquiry to say was the minister misled well, she said we received a consignment and that's where we stood and then we, the part of the work that has to be done if there's a violation we then say what is the scope of work that has to be done i don't know if you recall at the time of the of the vessel docking there were issues there were many allegations that flew around so we needed to ascertain what is fact what is fiction and what becomes the term in the what what goes into the terms of reference and that is the work that is underway that is the part of us getting into a, uh, the, the inquiry because you can't go into an inquiry which has an open-ended mandate which does not have a clear terms of reference of what we want to ascertain and what we want to find out that is the first part of that uh, question and in terms of the intelligence work that we've done we'll then submit the same into that inquiry to say in terms of our own intelligence this is what we have found and rules in, that will inform also the terms of reference, and this is what the, the judge must clear. Yeah, uh, Minister, uh, uh, but just quickly, and I know that uh, you are quite busy. Uh, I, I want to get to this though the urgency then that we're going to be seeing that uh, inquiry, I suppose, then being set up, considering the, the posturing that we're hearing here um, from the ambassador. I mean, he, he immediately touches on 400 billion rand of trade that is now um, being jeopardized between the US and South Africa. This is as the country faces very difficult economic times. So let's, uh, times rather. So talk to me about just the urgency and really what at stake here for South Africans, in your view? And like I said, we cannot be bullied by the U.S. We will follow the time frames but that is suitable to us. We are not co-governing with the U.S. with the ambassador. And maybe that just to clarify, the trade relations of South Africa and U.S., we continuously have negotiations at different intervals. You recall there was a time the U.S. had problems with our stand on on chicken because they wanted to dump their chicken into South Africa. And we said we had small businesses we needed to protect on the chicken. We made compromises, if you remember, on the first round of discussions around Agoa. And when we compromised, it killed our chicken industry. And we had the next round of discussions. We said, no, we're not going to compromise. We need to protect our own industry because it also affects SMEs in the sector. So it, the ambassador must not create an impression that is the first time that South Africa and the U.S. engage on trade relations. But the fact of the matter is that they've lost um, <laughs> a trade arrangement with China around uh, Maisley, and they, they want us to, uh, on grain, they want us to be punished for that. We're not. We, China says they want uh, a grain from us. We're going to supply grain. Who they dump in that process, it has nothing to do with us. It's business of trade between nations, and we compete for 
for clientele. But we, we, there are things that the U.S. wants from us in terms of our trade arrangements, and there are things that we want from them. And we are very adamant that we need to continue to participate in Agoa because they want to remove us on, on a different basis, which is not factual. And we're saying, let's clarify. And they're not the only ones. The Europe is, is, is killing our um, uh, citrus industry. They're putting requirements that are not, that are not uh, objective and fair. They're violating World Trade Organization. So those type of engagements continue to happen on a daily basis between trading nations. And the ambassador should not create an impression in the minds of South Africans that whatever is on the basis of our relationship with either China, they have to negotiate, they have to bargain from the trading relation. A quick final one from my end, Minister. Can you confirm that when Dr. Sidney Mufamadi as well as uh, Mr. Chauke went to the USA, was it with regards to this issue? Which issue? The issue in relation to Lady R. Um, you know, we have a number of negotiations we are having with the U.S. It, it covered a range of issues, including the, uh, the trade relations and so forth. So it's not specific to this issue. It might have been uh, discussed, but it's part of the work that the envoys do for the president, and they come back and report to the president.